Before we finish this exercise, I want to make sure that the scene is very clean. Um, what I mean by that is I'm going to go to the channel box. So up here, um, this is the channel box. And down in this area, I can make some layers. So I could go over to my outliner and I could select the snowman. And now with the snowman selected, I'm going to click on the fourth icon over here. And that is create a new layer and assign selected objects. So if I click on that, um, I can see that now the visibility, I can toggle it on or off. And I can name this snowman underscore visibility. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> so maybe I'll hide him. And now I could select maybe the snowflakes. Okay, and I can see that the snowflakes are, it's kind of weird when it's selected, but um, when I zoom out, I can tell it's selected. And now maybe I'll make another one called snow visibility. And then I could hide that. Okay, and I could grab, it looks like um, if I open up the snow, grab the instancer and the snowflake master, I'm gonna try adding that to a layer and hide that, there we go. Um, and maybe I'm like, you know what, I wish this would have been on the snow visibility layer. So with it selected, I could right click on the snow visibility and say add selected objects. Then I could delete this layer by right clicking and going delete layer. Okay, cool, there's my snow visibility. And my snowman. So I'm going to hide both of those. Um, maybe I select the tree and the ground. Okay, maybe I put that on a layer called ground underscore visibility. And then I could select the fence. Fence visibility. Okay, great. Now you can see I could, I could bring all that stuff back. And the neat thing about these layers, not only can I toggle the visibility of these objects, but I can also reference the objects, or I, I should say restrict the objects. So for example, if I didn't want to accidentally be able to select the fence, I could select the fence layer. And if I press T for template, that will make it so I can see through it, but I can't select it, even if I try clicking on it. Or I can go to R for restricted, and now I can't select it either, but now I can see it like this, okay? So if I restricted everything, I wouldn't be able to click on anything in the scene. Well, except the light, because that's not on the layer. I could put that light on the layer if I wanted to, but that's nice. If you don't want anyone to kind of touch the scene and mess it up, let's say if you're giving this to somebody else, um, or maybe I want it so I can't mess anything up except the snowman. So maybe I uncheck restricted here. Now I could select the snowman individually, okay? Or I could select the group over here of the snowman. So it's kind of, they're kind of similar. Uh, the display layers give us options to, um, hide the visibility, restrict things, and make it non-selectable. And over here, it's just kind of more of an organizational structure. I think with this, I'm gonna add this, both the sky dome light and the directional light. I'm gonna group that. I'm gonna call this lighting. And then I'm gonna, um, maybe I'll grab the tree and the ground, group that, call this environment. And then maybe grab all of this stuff and then group it control G and call this snowman. And now if I open this up, I can see that I have the snowman here. I've got the fence, the snow, the lighting and the environment. Okay. So once again, really cool stuff there. Um, just to organize our scene 
before we actually get into rendering. So in the next scene, we'll, we're going to start to make um, a, a video file.